What if you could have an action camera for moto vlogging on your motorcycle for about half the price of a GoPro? Well, let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Today we're going to talk about the Acaso Brave 8 action camera. Now, I just want to let you know right up front that Acaso sent me this camera. They reached out to me a few weeks ago, sent me this Brave 8 to test and review. However, they're not sponsoring the video. No money exchanged hands. They're not paying me to make this video. So just want to let you know that right up front. And what I'm going to focus on in this video is how this camera uh, compares to a GoPro Hero 8 and Hero 10, because that's what I currently use as my action cameras for my motor vlogs. And I'm only going to talk about this camera in as it pertains to motor vlogging. So if you're not a motor vlogger or if you're not interested in motor vlogging, um, there are many, many other great videos out there that do uh, compare this uh, this Acaso Brave 8 to other uh, GoPros. There's uh, one by Ben at Authentech. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, comparison videos. I'll put a link to his video in this video if you want to check it out. He goes into much more detail than I'm going to go into. But I am going to unbox this today very quickly, show you what's inside. I think it's pretty easy to see just from the packaging uh, where Acaso got the inspiration for this uh, camera. Obviously, it looks virtually identical uh, to GoPro's packaging. And even the name Brave 8, you know, and the GoPro Hero 8 or Hero 9 or Hero 10, Hero Brave, you get kind of get the correlation there. If we look on the back of the box, it talks about some of the features of this action camera. Now, before I get started on the features, this camera retails for about $279. The current GoPro 10, Hero 10, is going to be about $500. So just so you know, it's almost half the price. Uh, basically, this tells what comes in the package. It does come with a remote control. It comes with a battery charger. It comes with battery, several different mounts, a lens cloth, uh, some adhesive pads, USB cables. Well, heck, let's just open it up and see what's inside. Tear it open here. Okay. Okay, so we have the uh, the camera here, and I believe their lens, they have this little screw-on protector. This is the actual lens here, and this, uh, you know, has like a little protection to keep the lens from getting scratched, which, which is really nice. I like that. Okay, okay so this is the camera. It is in a frame, as you can see. Unlike the Hero 8, 9, and 10, it does require the use of a frame, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I do like the fact that the GoPro uh, has the little, the little fingers down here at the bottom so that you can just mount it right to, uh, to one of the mounts. But nevertheless, they do give you this, this frame. Uh, there's also an opening on the side of the frame. One, it looks like, is for the button here on the side. And the other one is for this little door here. We'll open this up see what's underneath here. If I can figure out how to open it. There we go. Looks like we have a micro SD card slot. And I would say that's a USB-C port, probably for charging, maybe even for getting files off. Um, the battery compartment is on the bottom. Let's see if I can figure out how to open it. Okay, like that. Does not have the battery in there currently. We'll put one in, see what happens. Another little screen protector on the back. Okay, let's get the uh, rest of the package up here and see what's inside. So, what we have here is a remote control, which is very nice. I'm glad they do give you a remote. So we get a remote control, which you have to pay extra for with GoPro. You do not get the remote control with GoPro. I like that. It looks to me like they've included 
two batteries. The batteries are pretty small. They're not very large. Let's go ahead and put a battery in here, if I can figure out how it goes in. Lots of plastic packaging. This is the battery charger. This is a, looks like a USB-C cable. USB-A to USB-C. This is one of their mounts. It's very similar to a GoPro mount. I'll have to see if it will fit in a GoPro mount. It probably will. Uh, they give you a handlebar mount. Uh, this would be good for a bicycle or any kind of round bar. If you have a handlebar, you can mount to that. And then we have a quarter 20 tripod mount. They give you two kinds. One is a female, one is a male. So we'll. Uh, that's a nice uh, feature to add. And then, of course, you have the, the quick start guide. And uh, it just tells you basically what you need to do to get it started. So let's see if we can't... I'm going to move all this stuff off to the side. Again, Ben from a, a FinTech uh, goes into great, much more great detail on all this stuff. Uh, for now, I'm not interested in any of this. We'll come back to that later. Right now, I'm just interested in the camera. I want to turn it on and see what we have to do to get it to work. This looks like the power button here on top. Oh, maybe you have to have an SD. It does not come with an SD card. I do not see an SD card. Oh, it will. There it goes. It's starting up now. Okay, so it starts up. The first thing it's asking me is uh, for my language, which is English. We'll check OK. And today is February 22nd. The screen is not quite as responsive as the GoPro. It's a little bit, almost almost has a little bit of a sticky feel to it. It's interesting, but it, you know, it, it is responding. Please download and install the... That's interesting. They spell Acaso differently here than they do on the packaging. This is A-K-A-S-O. This is A-K-A-O-S-O. Whatever. The Acaso Go app on the App Store or Google Play. Okay, so we're downloading the app. I notice on the App Store the Acaso Go app only has a two and a half star rating. Not sure what that means yet, but maybe we'll find out as we go through the setup process. At this point, I decided it's probably a good idea to spare you the 25 to 30 minutes that I spent trying to get the app to connect to the camera and to update the firmware on the camera. Uh, needless to say, this is a real exercise in patience. If you do purchase the Acaso, Brave 8, you better be prepared to spend some time to get it uh, connected and updated. It is a little bit of a strain, so hopefully they can streamline that in the future. I'm going to wait until I get ready to put this on the bike, and once the weather warms up, I'm going to come back and I'll have a new card in here, higher speed card that will work with this camera. I'm going to test it at 1080p. Now, I'll probably do a 1080p 60, maybe even a 120 test, just to test it and see how it works, um, to show you some samples, and uh, we'll go from there. So, let's get to the bike. Well, good morning, everybody on YouTube. Welcome to another Cruise Man's Moto Vlog. You notice something different today. I'm testing out the Acaso Brave 8. And uh, in this particular section of the video, I'm going to be comparing it to this GoPro Hero 8. And on my helmet, I have the GoPro Hero 10. So for those of you in the market for a action cam to maybe do some motor vlogging this spring and summer when you start your riding season 
and you're a little hesitant to shell out $500 for a GoPro Hero 10, uh, this Acaso Brave 8 is only $279. So you could definitely save some money, but is it good enough? Well, as I said in my opening in the studio, I'm not going to test all the capabilities of this camera. I'm only interested in how it performs for motovlogging. And this camera has a lot of resolutions that it can perform uh, that I'm not going to be testing because I don't use those resolutions for motovlogging. I'm also not going to be talking the verbal part of my motovlog using the Acaso because I could not find a microphone input. I did find a USB-C input, but I'm not sure if that will accommodate a microphone or not. I did not check up on it. I didn't see anything about it in the instruction. I am on my way to a friend's house for uh, lunch, and once I get there, I will take these cameras off the mounts, and I'm going to try to put this two camera mount up here on the helmet so that you can uh, see some side-by-side -side comparisons. Uh, between the GoPro 10 and the Acaso Brave 8. So how many of you are in the market for an action camera? Please put that in the comments down below. I also want to remind all of you to please subscribe to our channel if you love motorcycling, if you're passionate about motorcycles. Doesn't matter what kind of motorcycle you ride, or even if you don't ride a motorcycle, you're welcome to subscribe to our channel. Just click that little subscribe button and the notification bell. But not only that, if you're already a subscriber, please double check to make sure you are still subscribed. Now, one other thing that's different about this Acaso Brave 8 compared to the GoPro. The GoPro has what they call, I think they call it hyper smooth, and it's a image stabiliza uh, stabilization that will iron out the little bumps along the way. The Brave 8 has what they call super smooth. The difference is it doesn't do it in the camera. You have to download the video file to the app on your phone and then it applies the super smooth uh, to that clip. It's an extra step that's required to, you know, get the video to appear with the image stabilization. And I will try to show you a comparison side by side of what that super smooth looks like compared to not applying the super smooth and what the super smooth looks like compared to the GoPro hyper, I think they call it hyper smooth. So now I'm doing a test of the Brave 8 compared to the Hero 10. And I have them both mounted on my helmet side by side. And the one thing you notice with the Acaso is that the colors appear a little more washed out than they do on the GoPro. GoPro colors are much warmer and much richer and I do have the vibrant setting turned on so you notice it here. The other thing you notice is that the GoPro's uh, hyper smooth image stabilization is far superior to the Acaso Brave 8. However, for moto vlogging, I'm not sure it's a huge difference. I mean, it, it is a difference. It is noticeable. Now, we can do some color correction on the Acaso to get it a little bit closer to the GoPro color, as you can see here. I did that in software. Here you can see compared to the Hero 8. Again, a little washed out, but we do some color correction, and we can get pretty close to those GoPro colors. So this morning I decided to do some testing with 4K video on both cameras. You'll notice again the GoPro colors are much richer and warmer. The Acaso appear a little washed out. And you also notice that image stabilization in 4K is not nearly as good as it was in 1080p on the Acaso. But going down the road, here you get some examples. There's those washed out colors, but we can correct that to some degree in the software. It's just a little more work. 
Here you can see the GoPro again, and side by side you can see a big difference in the image stabilization of the GoPro to the Brave 8. Now the Brave 8 does have a wider angle of view. You'll notice on the right side you can see that entire tree on the Brave 8, but you can only see half the tree on the GoPro Hero 10. I suspect the GoPro is cropping in more on that image sensor to gain better stabilization for the HyperSmooth, but I don't know for sure, but you can definitely tell the difference when you're shooting in 4K. Okay, let's go back to the studio and I'm going to give you my final analysis of the Acaso Brave 8. Okay, so what do I think of this Acaso Brave 8 camera after having used it for a couple of days. Well, I think it's got some potential. I, uh, I'm going to tell you just briefly what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, I'll start out with the stuff I didn't like, and I may end up coming back and mentioning a few things down the road. But one thing uh, I'm not crazy about is that I have to use this frame. So this little frame, which is easy to get the camera in and out, I will say that. They did a good job designing the frame, with one exception. When the camera is in the frame, there's a little door on the side, and they've cut the frame out to allow you to get access to the SD card and the USB-C charging port. However, the way the frame has been designed, it will not allow that door to open. I couldn't get the door to open, and I fiddled with it for a long time, back and forth, trying to get it to open. It was easier just to take it out of the damn frame. So um, they need to re-engineer that little opening on the side of the frame to allow that door to open. Um, the other thing I'm not crazy about is the fact that you have to use the app on your smartphone to get the image stabilization to apply to your clips. That's an extra step that takes quite a bit of time. So basically what you have to do is when you're done shooting video, you then have to connect the camera to your smartphone to download the clips and process them in the app on the phone. That's the only way I could figure out how to do it. And it runs through a process where it applies what they call super smooth image stabilization. And trust me, you want to use the image stabilization because the video coming straight out of the camera without the image stabilization is pretty bad, pretty shaky. Uh, with the super smooth, it's good. It's not as good as the hyper smooth on the GoPro but I wouldn't expect it to be. The camera's half the price. But it's acceptable. It's, it's decent stabilization. Now, I tested the camera in 1080p 30, which is what I typically shoot a moto vlog in, and I also tested it in 4K 30. It has many other resolutions available I'll talk about in a second. The one thing I noticed, and I mentioned it in the video previously, is the colors coming out of the camera are somewhat washed out. So compared to the vivid colors of the GoPro, uh, the Acaso is kind of washed out looking. However, as I mentioned, you can correct that in your editing program if you have the ability to do color correction. So you can warm things up, and you can get it sort of close to the look and the feel and the warmth of the GoPro images. So that part I'm not too um, concerned about. So what do I like about this camera? Well, it, it's, it feels pretty well made. It feels pretty sturdy. I like the fact that they give you a lot of different mounting options. They also give you the wireless remote. That is a big value add. You have to buy that extra with GoPro. I also like the little lens protector. I think that's a great idea that you can just pop this off and pop on another one. Uh, so in case this gets scratched, you can very easily replace it with a new one. And, you know, it just, it, it has some good features. It has a lot of shooting resolutions. I didn't test all of them, but this thing goes like 4K 60, uh, 2.7K 3060. I didn't check all of them, but it has a lot of different shooting resolutions, actually more than the GoPro has. So uh, how good all those are, check uh, Ben's video. I think he tests some of those on the Authentic uh, review. 
but I think I liked the camera a little better than he did for moto vlogging. I think it's a good option for a moto vlogger that's just starting out, uh, doesn't want to spend $500 on the GoPro Hero 10, which is not without its own flaws, trust me, but it's still, it is a better camera than the Acaso, but it's t almost twice the price. But the Acaso is a good camera, and for someone just getting started, or maybe you want to add a second camera to your motor vlog. Maybe you want, like me, you have one on your handlebar, one on your helmet. Maybe you want to add a camera, a rear-facing camera, and you don't want to spend another three to four or five hundred dollars. You could get one of these, and it would be a good option for that. You just need to do a little color correction, and you have to deal with the app. Other than that, uh, I see some potential for this. Now, one thing I will note that I found out, it does have a front-facing camera, just like the, the Hero 9 and the Hero 10, but you have to turn it on. And there's actually a mode button on the side of the right side of the camera, and you have to hold that in for a couple of seconds, and that will switch from the rear, cam uh, rear screen to the front screen. And I will tell you that the front screen image is quite small. It's very hard to see. But if you're, I'd say, arm distance, uh, you'd be able to frame your shot, and it wouldn't be too big a deal. Now, that mode button, if you just tap it and you don't press and hold it, you just tap it, it just cycles through photo mode, video mode, and time lapse, I believe. And again, if you're interested in this camera, I'll put links in the description of this video where you can order this camera. And of course, uh, if you choose to do that, you'd be supporting this channel as well. However, that's my review of the Acaso Brave 8. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you own an Acaso Brave 8 or Brave 7 and you've used it for motor vlogging, tell us your experience in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. Oh, and don't forget, if you like this video, make sure you click that little thumbs up and like the video because that really helps us out with YouTube. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Reviews.